Good morning. Um, I had a request from a colleague for a video showing how to uninstall uh, applications from labs. Um, and I'm sure other people out there have the question too. So let's uh, take a look at that. Um, for this demonstration, uh, we're going to try to uninstall Papercut from Farmington's labs um, and install the new Papercut MF client so that we don't have to re-image them. Uh, this is a pretty common scenario. Um, this is a production environment, so we're going to have to use our imagination a little bit from time to time, but I think you'll be able to follow along. Um, so let's take a look first at the device collection to make sure that we don't still have an install deployed. Uh, let's see, we're going to do, we've already done a lot of these. Um, let's take a look at geography. And we do not have paper cut deployed. Uh, if we were going to like deploy an uninstall of DNA master, what we would do here is we would delete that install deployment. Uh, the other thing that we need to do if we're going to deploy an uninstall and and just basically remove an application from a lab is we also need to go into the task sequence and make sure that it is not still a part of the task sequence. Um, so in this case, we're going to use our imagination uh, and look at an old copy of Farmington's task sequence. And what we'll find here are some software steps. Um, Farmington has a unique model where every lab has its own payload. Most campuses, what you'll see is a default payload and a base applications and maybe a few other payloads. Um, we did not put paper cut on all computers, so it won't be in base applications. Um, but geography did have a printer in it, so we have paper cut for that room. And I'll do that and delete it. And actually, I think I do want to delete it because we don't need that piece of software anymore. Um, and there are a few other steps I'll need to delete that from before we can delete the package, just as an aside. But anyway, so now we've told SCCM, we've, we've created the condition where that piece of software won't be installed on that lab, uh, on that lab sorry, um, by imaging it with a task sequence or by having it deployed to the collection. Um, let's take a look at a similar problem at a different campus that might look more like yours. Uh, let's look at Fort Kent. Fort Kent has a default payload. So here's where we would have our deployments. So if we wanted to uninstall one of these, same process exists. And then in the task sequence, there's a default payload step that we would want to remove that application from. Okay, so that handles uninstalling it, except for going into Jira, uh, Confluence, rather, and updating the documentation in Confluence. Um, and let's take a look at that. So if we were to go into UMF, and that doesn't look normal, but that's okay, we would want to take Papercut out of that lab's documentation. Uh, a better example might be USM. So here we would want to, if we were removing Tableau, we'd want to go ahead and edit and remove that line from the standard software. And this is synonymous with the default payload in most cases. Um, it may be every case. So now we've removed it from being installed. How do we uninstall it from where it exists. So for that, we want to go into software library and under application management, we have our applications. This is a specific UMF application in the lab space. So we'll find that here. And then we'll scroll down to P, papercut 19. So in order to remove this from geography, it's this simple. We're going to deploy and uninstall 
deployment. We call it a required deployment and be careful this always defaults to user collections and in the lab space we never want to use user collections. It just gets us in trouble. Um, so we're going to go to Farmington and Geography, help me out. Thank you. Okay, so we don't need to touch anything here. This content should already be on the distribution points. Here, we're going to say uninstall, and that makes it default required. Um, I like to send wake up packets. It's sort of like a two for, you know, two for one deal. Get to wake the machines up, and then they remove the software if they were asleep. And the reason that that's safe to do, and by the way, the, the schedule here is as soon as possible. We're just going to leave that. Uh, the reason that I like to do the wake up packets, I do it almost all the time. Um, but especially with an uninstall, the uninstall step is more of a temporary measure. It's not something that we deploy and then we just kind of forget that it exists. That's not a good idea and we'll cover that in just a minute. Uh, so I tend to watch my uninstalls and kind of prod them along and get them to hit their compliance numbers. And then I delete that uninstall deployment that we have right here. Um, so anyway, that's why I do the wake up packets because I want to get this ball rolling and I want to I want to get it over with. Um, so yeah, as soon as possible. I don't ever display a lab software in Software Center. Usually it's on the machine or it's not. And I try to not show anybody alerts so that you know if somebody's sitting at a lab machine they don't get a little pop up in the corner that says hi I'm uninstalling paper cut makes it kind of seem like the computer is possessed so everything is silent and I check this to make sure that um, it gets uninstalled whether we're at our uh, deadline or not and everything else I just go with the defaults and you're done so that's making the magic happen what we can do now to help move this along and keep an eye on it is we go back to the assets and compliance, take a look at the lab, and do two client notifications. The first one is download computer policy. We use this whenever we do a deployment, basically. Uh, if, I, if we were to deploy a software to Software Center, if we were to deploy a baseline configuration, the computer doesn't know about it until we tell it to download that policy. Uh, and then I try to give that five minutes, but for the sake of the video and because I'm pretty sure these machines are off and will stay off for now, I'm going to go ahead and um, application deployment, evaluate application deployments. So that will help move things along. Um, in an emergency situation, which shouldn't happen, but sometimes they do, it does help to tell the computers on a fairly regular basis to evaluate application deployments. Um, I've seen it where 20 machines or so have downloaded the content of an application and then they're just waiting to install for some reason and I tell them to evaluate their application deployments again and all of a sudden they start to they start to do it. Um, we've done some large deployments and they would just stall until I went in and told everybody to deploy their uh, evaluate their deployments again and then things started moving again. So just a just a note of I've, I've kind of observed that. So now we want to keep an eye on it um, because we don't most of the time, unless we're totally aware of what's going on in the uninstall, we don't want to deploy that install until the uninstall is done so that we don't create a tug of war where one deployment is uninstalling the application because it sees that it's there and then the application deployment sees that it isn't there because it's been uninstalled and reinstalls it. It's a huge waste of resources and obviously it would create some very unexpected behavior in the lab. Um, and I will show you how to make sure that you can safely do two at the same time, although hopefully you'd never have to. 
um, but just for the sake of understanding it. Um, so all right, we want to keep an eye on that deployment. So we just go over to monitoring tab and then we look at the deployments. I tend to always sort them by the date created because I'm monitoring something that I just did. And, you know, we don't see any movement on this as I kind of expected. This does usually take even best case scenario half an hour for the lightest weight thing to happen. Um, so normally they'll all start here and then as time goes on they'll move the way down to in progress and then they'll be in success. You do get little messages along the way that says how things are going. See if I can find something that's in progress. Um, got a zoom update we can check out. Looks like a pretty great example. Not one of mine, but um, doesn't matter for this purpose. Okay. So, <clears throat> as you're looking at these uh, at these numbers, already compliant means that in this case that individual is already updated. So, Zoom asked them to update and they did it. So, that's a win. Here, 2,000 people successfully installed it. Um, this is probably a different deployment type. Yeah. Yeah. So there's a special one for Win7. Devin had to handle. Um, and then we, we've got all these people who are in progress still. Um, so the content can download and hang there. You can wait for the content. So prodding it along can help in all of these different scenarios. Help, help you get into the green. Um, so that's how I keep an eye on it. Um, once you're done with the uninstall there's a couple of ways you can go about removing that uninstall um, here we've cleaned up bef already but um, we would delete the uninstall and then deploy the new one I like to wait at least 15 minutes between deleting the uninstall um, here, I guess we're going to have to use our imagination because none of these other ones are far enough along that I can delete it. But if we go back to geography again, we have this uninstall. If this were at 100% compliance, meaning that it had worked on everything or at least everything that was still online and in the lab, um, we would delete it. And then before we do our install follow-up deployment, we're going to want to do those client notifications just to make sure that those machines no longer see a request to uninstall and we don't create a tug of war. Um, then we can deploy a new piece of software, which I have shown in another, in another video. Um, in order to delete a package from SCCM it's really as simple as going in finding that application and oops sorry finding the application and deleting it the thing with that is that SCCM will not let you unless you remove every reference to it in a deployment and every task sequence so basically the steps that we just did you'd have to do that for every place that you've used it um, so if you've got nine deployments and it's in nine task sequences, it can be a little bit of work, but it doesn't happen on a daily basis. So it's, it's what, it's what we got to do. Um, so the other thing I wanted to show before I wrap this up is how to tell for sure a, that the package you're deploying an uninstall for even has a working uninstall, uh, as a rule, EUT puts an uninstall step in every package. Not every developer does, not every technician does, uh, but here's how you can find out for sure. Um, if you go into your code editor of choice and you find the package, we're just gonna skip right to the chase here. Here's the Papercut 19 package. Uh, if we open up that PowerShell file and we find the 
uninstallation steps, you'll see that we have uh, an attempt to remove uh, Papercut 19, and then we have a step to remove every form of Papercut NG, uh, whether that's 18 or 19. And then we have a step to remove it from the auto run um, because this package actually isn't very um, well behaved when it comes to uninstalling it. It tends to leave lots of stuff behind. So we have an extra step to keep it from auto running. Uh, <clears throat> so that's, you know, this is the, the PS1 file. We just want to check and make sure that you have an uninstallation package. The other thing you can do is you can check how it's uninstalling. So in my case, like I said, this is specifically for Papercut 19, and then this is any Papercut NG client. What I'm installing in place of Papercut NG is Papercut MF. So I know that none of these steps will uninstall Papercut MF. Um, I don't know how they're going to behave if they're installed at the same time, so I'm not going to tempt the fates with that. I just kind of wanted to illustrate that it's easy to kind of understand what's going on and know where you're going to run into trouble potentially. Um, so, and that's that's just kind of how you make sure you know what's going to happen when you pull that trigger. Um, and definitely make sure everything's documented in Confluence when you're removing packages. Um, please take them out of the documentation so we don't think that they still should be there. And if you're adding software, obviously add that to the documentation as well. Uh, so that's it. Uh, I also had a request for how to do customizations like desktop shortcuts and other tweaks that um, I guess EUT doesn't just provide. Uh, that's a really complex topic. Um, just to summarize it for anybody who doesn't really want to watch the whole thing, it's basically anything that you can make a PowerShell script to do. We can show you how to automate that in your lab or anything that you can wrap with the PowerShell App Deploy Toolkit, um, which is kind of like PowerShell on steroids. I definitely have videos um, on this channel on how to use that, so check those out if you want to know. And again, if you get that working in like a virtual machine or on a, on a test machine and, and you can see that it's installing something, let us know and we can help you automate that. Um, and if you don't know how to do any of that, you know, we're happy to, to host tutorials and trainings and things like that. So just reach out to us and let us know and we will show you how to do it. Uh, so anyway, I hope everyone's having a good day and talk to you soon.